This activity is all about understanding how different decimal values relate to one another. We're most familiar with decimal values as far as money goes. The tenths position would be anything related to dimes quantity. The hundredths position would be anything related to pennies quantity. And we need to know that every 10 units of a smaller value that we have can be simplified into one unit of a larger value. If I have 10 pennies, I can simplify that to one hundredth or one dime. And so we are giving different representations of decimal values and finding if is there another way that we can express that same value using different quantity combinations. I can express 10 cents in terms of having 10 pennies or having one dime. So if we look at the first uh, example, uh, Amanda had drawn this to represent 13 hundredths. And we can go ahead and simplify that by knowing that 10 hundredths equals 1 tenth. This represents the same as the long rectangle. So we can rewrite this, we can express the same value using a larger value and then that replaces those smaller values and then combine it with the smaller values that couldn't be simplified in any other way. So we have a total of 13 squares to represent 13 hundredths or one long square and three small squares to also represent 13 hundredths. The next story problem had us looking at 25 thousandths. So whenever we have a decimal value, we always title its place value by whatever place the last number was in. Three places over from the decimal is the thousandths position, so it's 25 thousandths. With decimals, in order to combine units or simplify them to larger units, you have to be working on numbers of 10. Well, two, isn't a number that we can simplify. I don't have 10 of them. And five is also only half of a, a unit of 10. So we have to take a larger value, this hundredth, and break it down to its smaller unit. How many thousandths does it take to make hundredths? Again, it's based on units of 10. If I have 10 pennies, I can make one dime. Well, I need 10 thousandths to make one hundredths. So another way that I can express this is for each one of these squares, I'm going to draw 10 lines. So I'm going to represent this larger value in terms of its smaller values worth. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then I have the 5 there additionally. So I have a total of 25 thousandths. Now for number three, we're given three different decimal values and we need to express them in two different physical forms. So for one tenth, well, one long rectangle represents one tenth, but 10 smaller units also combines to be equivalent to one tenth. So I could write 10 10 smaller boxes. Both of these represent one tenth. Here I have two hundredths, so two pennies. Well, each one of these little squares is worth two pennies, so I take two of them, but then because that can't simplify to a larger unit, I then need to go to the next unit down and represent that. It takes 10 thousandths to make two, to make one hundredth, so I need for each one of these I have, I need 10 lines. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So a simplified version, more involved version, but they're still equivalent, representing the same amount. Then if I have hundreds, I have four, one, or sorry, thousands, one, two, three, four, or I need to go to the next size down, and how many of these does it take to make one of those? It makes ten, it takes ten, ten thousandths to make one one thousandth. So I need, I need 40 dots. There we go. And that's how we are able to express these different 
decimal value in terms of two different units of measurement. So here we have a base 10 grid and we can use it to help us find out what the sum of different decimal values are. 4a had three hundredths and five hundredths, so because that's a based on a unit of 100 making up the whole, this grid works really well for that. So if I have three, one, two, three, and I add five more of the same value, I fill in one, two, three, four, uh, wait, one, two, two, four, six, eight, nine. My grid is off. Um, I gotta, I gotta add another line to this. I'm like, that's not adding up, right? Okay. Okay. So I had three. I needed to add five to it. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. If each one of these lines represents a tenth, how much do I have of that? I have eight pennies out of the 100 it takes up to fill the grid. So 3 hundredths plus 5 hundredths equals 8 hundredths. If I have, now this can even work even if I don't necessarily work off of units of 100. If I have 6 uh, thousandths and, and 7 thousandths, I can just know that I need to add an extra decimal and zero to whatever my final sum is. So. Uh, I'm just going to move over here so I don't have to start my colors over again. If I have six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I need to add seven more, and I know that each row has ten, I'm just going to keep continuing the row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so by adding the six hundredths and the seven hundreds, or I'm sorry, these are actually thousands, I am able to fill a full row, which means I can combine, condense all of those smaller units into one larger unit to make point zero, and then a one, and I have a total of, and then another column of three. So I have one hundredths and three thousandths to go with adding point zero zero six to point zero zero seven. Okay, again, Basing off of a grid of 100, I'm just focusing on these two. I know I need a placeholder of a zero here to keep the 13 in that uh, the, the thousands position. And then if I have four tenths and seven tenths, um, I can, again, I can even make that simpler. If I have a grid of 10, I can just make each line. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and and so I fill in, I have four. One, two, three, four. Um, okay, and then I have seven to add to that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, well at six, I have a full whole grid. So that's one. And then how much of an additional column would I have left over? I would have one. So 0.4 plus 0.7 is 1.1 because I had more than 10 units of a tenth and so that carries on and simplifies to the larger place value which then goes into the whole numbers.